All teachers have their little quirks. There are things that they have that are special to their classroom that nobody else does. I'm gonna share with you a couple today that I do in my classroom that tend to work really well, get great student buy-in. So hopefully you try and use them. If you don't, that's great, but you might come up with a couple ideas after this video. Let's get started. Let's start by talking about Friday three minutes. This is one of the favorite things that I do in my classroom. It goes all year long. Every class period has the opportunity to earn them. And it's just every week they're trying to earn a total of eight minutes. Now, how do they earn those minutes? It's just through behaviors that I appreciate, things that I enjoy. It could be anything as small as just watching a kid pick up a piece of garbage and throw it away on his way out the door, or you know, I might be looking for an entire class to respond. What did everybody get for X? Everybody on three, one, two, three. If the entire class responds right then and there, I typically will run over to the board and just give them one or two points. So let's say period one does something that I really appreciate. Okay, I'm gonna go one, two, three points right there. Remember the total they're gonna earn throughout the week is eight minutes. So they're almost halfway there already, okay? What this does is it's a positive reinforcement to the students of, hey, I appreciate what you're doing. Sometimes I tell them exactly what it is that earned them the points. Sometimes I just go over there and knock them off. And then the kids are like, what did we get those for? And I'm like, I don't know, maybe you guys can figure it out. Okay, something you did made me happy. And then they start thinking about what is it that he appreciates? What are things that we need to do to be the best class that we can possibly be? Okay, so when they earn those minutes, let's say they only earn the three. That means they get three minutes on Friday. End of the period comes, I'm gonna cut it off about three minutes short, and we're gonna have fun for three minutes. Maybe three minutes, not a whole lot of time, might just be having some conversations with them, right? Ask them some questions about the weekend. It's just a good way to die down after the whole week's gone through. They've worked hard, they've busted their butts. They deserve some time to just get a little bit of a break, go off and enjoy your Saturday, Sunday. Hey, I wanna do the same thing too, right? So eight minutes total, whenever they max out, which often my classes will, right? A lot of times I'm getting what I expect from them. So they'll get the total of eight minutes on the board. They'll know on Friday that those eight minutes are coming. I usually go to silent ball. That's my get my go-to game. Um, I got a video on that if you're not sure how to play it, but you can do whatever you want, right? It's just an opportunity for the kids to say, we did what we were supposed to throughout this week. We made our teacher happy. We should be proud of what we accomplished. Let's have a little bit of fun before we take off. All right, Friday three minutes, think about it. If you're not new to the channel, you've probably seen this in every single video that I've ever posted. It's just my quote board. It's just my random weird thoughts throughout the morning, whatever I come in with, I usually put up on the board. Kids appreciate seeing it. Sometimes it sparks conversations. Sometimes it starts arguments, right? I love it. It's one of my favorite things to do every morning. And then I like to see how the kids respond to it. It's just something to think about, giving them a daily quote. Um, you can go online and find lots of quotes if you wanna do inspirational, if you wanna be funny about it. You go about it, what makes sense to you? What kind of teacher are you? I would just recommend putting your own little spin on it. I oftentimes try and be funny with it as much as I can. That's just kind of my sense of humor. A lot of times the kids won't get it, right? My humor is a little bit different than most. So I enjoy when a kid's like, what does that even mean? And it's just me having a giggle with some other kids that definitely do pick up on what I'm trying to say within the quote. Within the quote. Let's keep in mind that I'm a math teacher, so puzzles are a big part of my classroom. I've got them all over the place, but one thing I always have laid out is a jigsaw puzzle. So jigsaw puzzles are a great opportunity for you to talk with your kids, talk about their problem solving skills. This table is always dedicated to some sort of jigsaw puzzle. When they finish it or complete it, I'll glue it all together. Sometimes I'll post them up on the wall and we keep track of how many we accomplish throughout a year. Why do I do it? Well, I want kids to work efficiently. So if I give a homework assignment that potentially could be done within the hour, then the kid gets it done before the end of the period, they're more than welcome to come over here and work on the jigsaw puzzle as long as they don't have any missing assignments in my class. This is just an extra opportunity, something that's different about your classroom that other classrooms might not have available to the kids. Some of them will appreciate it, others won't buy in at all, but it is something that you should think about possibly doing because I know for a fact when I was a student, if I would have had a jigsaw puzzle laid out over here, I would have worked my butt off to get my homework done so that I could come over here and be a part of it. It's also a great opportunity for you to have conversations about problem solving skills. You'd be surprised at how many times I've seen students start a brand new puzzle and not work on the border first. So I just kind of pick their brains and ask them what their process is and how they go about it. It's just open the opportunity for conversation to learn a little bit more about your kids. 
One of my favorite things that I do is called My Friday Hero. I don't do it every single Friday, but sporadically throughout the year, I will give them an entry task about somebody that was a hero of mine as a kid or is a hero of mine today, like Annie Edson Taylor, Queen of the Mist, baby. If you don't know her story, look her up. She's incredible, one of the toughest women in the entire world, did something unbelievable, unbelievably brave, and she was a teacher. How cool is that? All right, so I share with the story. I share with the kids the story of the person. I tell them why they are a hero of mine, or the why they are somebody that I look up to. And then I typically will have a problem for them related to that person. I'll create some kind of math problem so that they have an entry task to go along with that person's story. So you all have heroes out there. You all have somebody that you look up to. Share those things with your kids. They are interested in your life and in your interests and in your hobbies just as much as you are in theirs. So this is, again, going to spark conversation, spark interest, and it's a fun little activity to do on a Friday as we're moving on into the weekend, baby.